Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this author interaction of the 2022 NLF Reading Challenge. My name is Deepthi, and I'm very excited to be here. We hope you are too. Before we begin the interaction, do allow me to give you a brief introduction about the NLF Reading Challenge, followed by a few housekeeping rules for today's session. The NLF Reading Challenge is a four-month-long reading event from March to June 2022 for students between 10 to 13 years of age. It runs for students across India on the non-competitive uh, and competitive tracks. In addition to fun book-based activities and regular author interactions, the challenge will conclude with a quiz competition that will see the three best teams win gold, silver, and bronze engraved, engraved trophies respectively certificates of achievement, and a great set of books. For today's event, please use the Q&A box to type out your questions or your responses to what's being discussed during the session. If you're a student, a teacher, or a school librarian, please mention the name of your school along with the question as well. Today, we are privileged to have with us author, activist, and actor, Malik Pancholi. Malik is an award-winning actor whose career has spanned hit television shows, animated series, the Broadway stage, and films. You might recognize him as the voice of Baljeet from Phineas and Ferb and as the voice of Sanjay on Sanjay and Craig. He has also served on President Barack Obama's Advisory Commission on Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders, where he co-founded the anti-bullying campaign Act to Change, which he continues to chair. Today, Malik is here to speak with us about his debut book, the Best at It, which tells the charming story of a 12-year-old Indian-American boy ca called Rahul discovering his identity. Rahul is grappling with his cultural identity and trying to figure out whether or not he's gay, while also determined to become the best at something. Rahul's story is heartwarming, incredibly touching, and highly relatable. Welcome, Malik. We're so happy to have you with us today. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. And thank you for that introduction. Um, hi, everybody who's watching. It's so, so nice to, to meet all of you. Good luck on the challenge. Hopefully everybody's reading a lot of the books and uh, diving right in. I thought, um, I know Deepthi gave a nice little introduction of the book. I thought I would read a few pages of it just so you'd get a sense of um, how I feel about Rahul and uh, a little bit about his character. But uh, as Deepthi mentioned, Rahul is feeling very insecure about um, both his cultural identity, being one of the only brown kids in his school, um, and also trying to figure out whether or not he's gay. And um, he's feeling a little bit less worthy than he would like to feel. And so he sets off on a mission to prove that he's the best at something, thinking that if he just can let everyone know that he's the best at something, that they will like him a little bit more. Over the course of the book, he comes to learn that actually the greatest gift is learning to be the best at being yourself. But it takes him a little while to get there. Uh, so he tries to find different things that he might succeed at. And one of those things is he tries out for uh, the football team. It's American football. So throwing and catching and touching goals. And um, much like me, Rahul is not a very good football player, but he is determined to make the team. So he practices with his grandfather, who he calls Bai, um, and, uh, and his best friend, Chelsea. And he gets ready for these tryouts. And so the, the part I thought I would read to you from the book is um, there's three parts to the football tryouts. He makes it past round one. He's not great, but he gets he does pretty good. He makes it past round two. Again, not so great, but he does pretty good. And then this is what happens in round three of the football tryouts. And I'm just reading from, uh, reading from the book itself. Uh, so, coach offers me a hand. I squeeze it tight and hoist myself up onto my rubbery legs. He lowers his voice. Listen, Rahul, you made it past round one and you made it past round two, and that's pretty good. But honestly, you just barely made it. The third round is actually playing some ball. Are you sure you wanna go through with this? I wring a little sweat out from the bottom of my shirt, my hands still shaking. It's truly okay if you wanna call it a day, coach says. Is this the last round? I ask, clutching my side. Yes. It is. 
I set my jaw. Then I'm doing it. All right, boys, listen up, coach calls. Justin, Brent, James, and I are standing in a diamond. There's no tackling here, only touch. No teams, each man for his own. All I want you to do is throw and catch. Rahul, I'm watching not only for how you handle the ball, but how well you block. Get yourself open and communicate with the other players, all right? Let's go. As everyone starts to spread out, Justin pats me encouragingly on the back. I turn to look at him, but a football goes swishing by my head. Brent jeers. Heads up, sucka. Let's go. I run to the ball and pick it up. I concentrate hard on holding it just how Mr. Wilson taught me. I pull it back by the side of my face. Justin is jogging out on my left. I make eye contact with him. He nods. I nod back. Go long! I scream as I catapult my arm forward. The ball shoots straight up in the air. Like literally straight up in the air. Like a fountain. Everyone tilts their head back to watch it. Then it comes barreling straight back down toward my face. No, 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 no! I scream and throw myself out of its way, covering the back of my head with my hands. When I open my eyes, somehow Brent has caught the ball. a boy, I hear his dad call out. Now can we just end this already? Next play, James has the ball. Throw it to Rahul, Coach Martinez calls. James nods my way, but suddenly Brent is standing in front of me. The back of his sweaty t-shirt blocks my face. How can I? He's not getting open, James complains. Rahul, you have to get yourself open, Coach barks, both his hands on his knees. I manage to tiptoe out from behind Brent, and as soon as my face clears his back, James aims the ball my way. I got it, I shout, except I don't. It flies right through my hands. Coach comes running in. Rahul, listen, I'll give you one more shot, but if you miss the ball again, I gotta shut this down, okay? Okay, I nod, but I can't let him shut this down. Not when I've gotten this far. I look over at the stands and I see my best friend Chelsea, both her fists pumping the air. I'm a rock star, I whisper to myself. I'm a rock star. Justin has the ball now. James is blocking him from the front. So Justin backs up a little farther. I cut across the field, a fire raging in my calves as I turn to run. Brent is coming in my way, so I pick up the pace, ignoring the stitch in my waist. Even though Justin is far down the field now, somehow it's like I see his face in close-up. His nostrils expand, and a bead of sweat trickles down the side of his nose. His eyelids drop down in slow motion, and I nod. Ready, I whisper. And then he hurls the ball across the field. It is flying so fast that every nerve in my body wants to run screaming. But instead, I dig my heels into the ground. The ball comes closer and closer and closer. I bare my teeth and bound up into the air. The football is inches away from me now. Oh my God, I'm gonna get it. I'm actually going to get it. Fake pigskin brushes against my fingertips. I have it, I have it, I actually. The next thing I know, my mouth is full of grass and the arm of my glasses is pressing into my cheekbone. I see a blurry football bouncing up and down like three feet away from me. Ow, 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 I moan. It feels like someone is jabbing a machete into my ankle. I reach my arm out, but the ball is too far away. Did I catch it? I ask. I mean, before I dropped it. Did I catch it? 
And that's kind of how the chapter ends. To find out if Rahul catches the ball and makes a football team, you'll have to read the next chapter. But I hope that gives you an idea uh, for me that even though Rahul is dealing with a lot of big things, like figuring out his identity and trying to be the best, he's he's an optimistic kid who really believes he's going to do it. Um, and I think that uh, makes the book have a lot of humor in it. So hopefully, hopefully you enjoyed that as much as I did. Um, so thank you. Hi. Thank you. I enjoyed that so much. Thank you so much. Now I really want to go listen to the audiobook. That oh, sounds yeah. like it'll be a really fun listen. Oh good. And I recorded the audiobook. So yes. I yes, saw that. Yes. yes. Yeah. I will do that. And it, I hope the audience members do that as well. Uh, so right. let's dive into the questions. And the first question that I wanted to ask you is that, like you said, this is your debut book. And it has been extremely well received. Um, so congratulations on that. It has found itself on multiple prestigious um, shortlists, and um, it has got so many honors, like the Stonewall Honor List for children's and young adult literature, uh, which honor exceptional books that talk about the LGBTQIA plus experience. And I also want to congra congratulate you on an award that's closer to home. Um, the Best at It has found itself on the New Book Awards shortlist in the emerging reader category. So the Neve Book Awards highlights books which are a window into the lives of the Indian identity. And the fact that your book about a young Indian American boy who is a mathlete but also figuring out his sexuality is on the short list speaks of the immense progress we've made over the years with Indian children's literature. We still have a long way to go um, in terms of bringing topics like this to the mainstream, um, to mainstream Indian children's literature. but. I personally feel like this is such a great step in the right direction. How did you feel when you heard about this particular honor? And um, have you had any interactions with readers from India about this book? Um, this is such a great question. First of all, thank you. I, it has been so, um, it has been such a, a gratifying experience to see how well the book has been received. And, you know, it, here in the States, it's, uh, it's on a number of state reading lists for children. It's already won a number of awards, as you mentioned. And so to have written a first book that's getting received like that really does, does mean a lot. But the, the Neve uh, honor does feel particularly special. I think that, you know, when I wrote this book, it's largely based on my own experience and even though uh, the story is very fictional you know he, uh, I, uh, I never tried out for football <laughs> um, like Rahul I would not have been very very good at it uh, but the emotional experience is very much based on my my own life what it felt like feeling different not being good at sports uh, not figuring out who I was um, and I never got to say that I'm gay until much later in life because I didn't have books around me that talked about this experience I didn't see characters on TV shows I didn't see characters in films. Uh, nobody I knew around me was talking about it. So I, I wanted to, in this book, put an experience that would allow younger kids to know that if you are struggling with something similar, it's okay. And to give them the language to be able to say the words that Rahul gets to say in this book, where he gets to tell his family and tell his friends that I'm gay. And he's met with a lot of love uh, around that. And so um, I know that in the States, this is still difficult. You know, it's uh, we've made a lot of progress, but it's still difficult for kids here. And in fact, right now, uh, we're dealing with a lot of um, a lot of states in America that are passing rules that are uh, against teaching certain things to young kids in schools. In Florida, there's a, uh, a, a ban on, on my book has been banned in certain parts of Florida where kids can't have access to it because it deals with a, a, a kid who knows that he's gay. So to know that readers in India are getting to have access to this book really means a lot. And one of the things that I uh, that I truly believe about awards and honors is it's uh, wonderful, of course, to, to get that and to feel like it's an accomplishment. But it also brings attention. It brings attention to the book. It allows librarians, it allows teachers to know that this book exists. So I just hope that with the Neve honor, that this means that um, that more kids will be able to find the book and, and read Rahul's story. Thank you. And you've answered a little bit um, also from my next question, but let me just read it out anyway. And we also have a question from the audience from Ayana Malik, who asks, is there some part or anything that is true about this book, which also adds to my question 
that um, you mentioned that although this book is fiction, fiction, there is a lot of your own life that is in the book. And um, there's a quote where I saw on the internet where you said, what's been amazing is the specificity of Rahul's story has given the book a universal appeal. It's been exciting to see how many people of varying backgrounds are connecting to it. So this book is a lot more about um, Rahul's coming out story. It's about him discovering his various identities. And um, by telling your story, what did you want readers to take away from it? And are these the kind of stories that you wish you'd read as a child? Um, 100%. I mean, part of the reason I decided to write a book um, as an adult is because I could have used this book when I was 12 years old, which is how Ra how old Rahul is in, in, in the book, and it didn't exist. And a as an adult, I came to find out that still nobody was writing this story. <laughs> and so I was like, well, if, if I want this book to be in the world, maybe it's time that I actually wrote it. Um, and for any of the young people who are, who are watching today who are interested in writing, I would say it's never too early to start. Uh, if you have a story to tell, know that you are the only person who can tell your specific story. So take a chance, write it. And you know, the first draft of this book was not good <laughs> because it was my first time writing. And I look back some, I look back, you know, at those pages now, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed that I even <laughs> sent this to somebody to look at. But that is the writing process that you go from draft one to draft two to draft three to draft four, and it gets better and better. Honestly, I think draft two might have even gotten worse than draft one, but it goes like this, and then finally you get to the story that is uh, the, the story that you want to tell. Um, and to your question about people from you know different identities and backgrounds relating to it, and, and I don't think I answered this question in, in your first question about have I gotten to interact with you know readers from India. I have um, mostly through the internet, you know, people sending messages uh, on social media or something and saying how much they're related to this. Uh, that feels really important to me. You know, I have um, people of all backgrounds that, that find parts of Rahul that they relate to, mostly because even though his specific story is about being brown in a largely white world or being gay in a world that doesn't really talk about being being gay i think we have all felt different at different parts in our lives we've all felt like we don't belong and really it's a story about how do you feel comfortable in yourself when you feel different and how do you find a way to belong and i think my my belief is that it's by actually being yourself and and in some ways we have to be okay with feeling a little uncomfortable sometimes in order to ultimately feel feel comfortable i don't know if that answered your question but i, I saw something in there <laughs> yeah. it did it definitely did and um you said that you didn't see stories like this growing up but another thing that i wanted to touch about uh, touch upon is that um so rahul's coming out story is um you know, it's also, there's also like him struggling with his identity and uh, most coming out stories tend to focus on the, the conflict between, um, you know, the people around them, the parents, the friends, the, um, the society around him. But your coming out story, his parents, his um, best friend, like you said, his grandfather, who he calls by, who's also super cool, they all accept him completely for who he is. And the unfortunate, unfortunate reality is that, um, especially in India, most queer kids continue to be ostracized. And the sort of family support that Rahul got in the book is, um, is the exception and it's not the norm. So was this a conscious decision on your part to surround Rahul with um, people who would love him for who he is? And if it's not too personal a question, did this mirror your own coming out story? Or was it something that you wish you had? Yeah, these are this is such a great question. Um, well, first of all, to speak to the book, I did want the book to have an aspirational quality, to have uh, to to create a picture that said you will be okay in the world. And for Rahul, he is met with so much love by, um, like you said, his parents, his grandfather, uh, his friends. Largely, there's one person at school who who I think he struggles with. Um, and to be honest, that was my experience, but it it wasn't my experience at 12. It was my experience in my late 20s, which is when I finally came out, but it isn't always easy. And, and I do have some, um, some extended family who I haven't seen in years and years and years and years because uh, they don't accept me for who I am. And 
unfortunately that is a reality but I will say that for me I would say 99% of the people around me have been really incredible um, and and so with this book what I wanted to show is that there is there is a community that will come to love you and if it is not, you know, for anyone who might be struggling out there, if it isn't your immediate family or if it isn't, uh, uh, you know, your classmates, there is a larger community too. You know, there's people like me, there's there's friends, there are people who will support you. And I wanted to show that um, in the book. But I also do recognize that the book does does I think also offer something to parents who read the book or to grandparents who might read the book you know recently I um, a group of grandparents read it with a group of younger kids and they had a book discussion at a library and one of the grandparents said um, I was told this that they said now I understand what what my grandchildren might be going through and that was important for me too to say that this is a possible way for you to react to your child to understand them and I would just say the last thing is that um, my next book is coming out this October, and I know we're going to talk about that too. Uh, but in that book, Nikhil Out Loud, um, he's also a gay Indian American kid, and he's not met with complete love. In fact, there's um, people who are upset that he's gay. He has some family members that he struggles with. And I did want to write that second book because I recognize that it isn't always easy for people. And I also wanted to put that into a book as well. I can't wait to read that book. Um, that also sounds really cool. So in this book, though, apart from Rahul's supportive family, there's also a bully, because of course, um, there's a bully called Brent who picks on Rahul's, um, you know, non-typical traits like the fact that he can't play football, as you so very uh, nicely read out. So I don't want to give too much away of the ending, but I really, really like how Brent's character arc is treated uh, with so much empathy. So he might be uh, struggling with the same things that Rahul is. And in addition to that, he also has to prove his words to his hyper-masculine father. So how did you come up, come up with this character? How did you develop this character? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, um, I do a lot of anti-bullying work, as, as you mentioned, that I started a, an anti-bullying campaign. And one of the things that we talk about a lot is that kids learn to be bullies from the outside world, whether it's their parents or something they see on TV or um, uh, and often that they are, uh, have a lot of insecurities, too, that, that kids who bully other kids are um, trying to prove something by putting somebody else down. And so I wanted to put that into Brent. And so we have a, you know, he, he's a supporting character. So unfortunately, we don't get to see a lot of his background, but we I did try to put in touches of that he has an overbearing father who doesn't treat other people kindly, uh, that he, I think, doesn't have a lot of friends. You know, in the book, he's got Justin and Justin likes Rahul. And so I think Brent feels threatened by that. And then there's one last touch, as you mentioned at the end, that Rahul has a question in his mind that could Brent be maybe also struggling with something? And I wanted to be careful with that because... Um, Rahul also has another line, I think, shortly after that, or maybe Chelsea, uh, where they say, well, um, uh, or maybe he's just not being a nice person, you know, because I don't I didn't want to give Brent a free pass either, because what he is doing is pretty, pretty bad. Um, and in a lot of ways, you know, outside of these being real people, I think Brent is kind of that uh, he's, he's that mirror of fear that Rahul has, which is that this is this is the way the world is going to laugh at me and make fun of me and and not um, uh, not accept me. And um, and I wanted to make sure that that kid was also three dimensional, that Brent was a three dimensional person. And that's why he was behaving that way. Absolutely. A very, very well developed character, uh, even though he's a supporting character. So the driving force in this book is Rahul's quest to become the best at something. And this is something that we also see in a lot of minorities. Um, you know, the pressure to become an ideal citizen or, um, you know, the term model minority where um, you have to prove you deserve a place in the society that you're in. So this also, I'm not saying this particular thing, but Rahul also um, displays some obsessive compulsive behaviors. He has a lot of anxiety and um, at a time when kids around the world are suffering from pressure from everyone around them, did you intend to specifically highlight the pressures felt by children from minority communities or is this something that happened organically? 
Um, a little bit of both. I, you know, it's organic because it's true to me, and I am a minority, <laughs> and so in a way, it was like this 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 dovetail. But I was a perf- I am a perfectionist. You know, it's something I still I still work on, and um, certainly as a kid, I felt like if I could win awards, then I would be loved for that. I would be appreciated for that. Uh, the OCD, obsessive compulsive behaviors, are very true to me. I um, I uh, especially at h- times of high stress, I have to uh, check locks and check doorknobs. I, it's a thing of I think trying to be in control in a world that sometimes feels out of control. And my understanding is, especially after having gone through the the uh, stresses of a pandemic, that a lot of kids that might have had these kinds of behaviors are also struggling with this. And so, you know, I hope that when they see Rahul in the book, they feel a little bit less alone. Um, but perfectionism is a hard one. And I think that, um, like you said, a lot of minority cultures especially have been taught that the way to gain uh, acceptance into a society is to prove you belong there. And part of what I want to show in this book is that you already belong. You don't have to prove anything to anyone. That even if Rahul does not place first or does not make the football team, um, he's still worthy of everything and still deserves to be loved. Um, and I believe that's 100% true. And it's why I wrote, and you know, the dedication of this book is... Um, to every kid who's ever wondered, am I good enough? Because I think you are good enough exactly the way, exactly the way you are. Thank you. And, um, and I'm so happy that the story is going to reach a lot, um, reach more audiences via your television adaptation, which is coming up with uh, HBO Max, am I right? That's so, right, yeah. yeah. Congratulations on that. Thank so, you, thank you. Related to that, I wanted to ask, um, there's been a recent surge in Asian South Asian protagonists, with Miss Marvel being the latest uh, to hit the screens. And but the sad reality again is that there's always resistance from people who are not used to seeing uh, brown people as leads. Um, so, what sort of reaction do you expect to uh, Rahul's story? Do you think that things are changing in terms of representation? Um, I do think things are changing. You know, I think I think there's a lot of work to be done. But I think the the biggest thing that I'm finding, and like with Miss Marvel, is that we are finding, especially in in American cultures, what you know, what I can speak to is that. Uh, uh, there are more creators coming behind the scenes. So instead of somebody else telling our stories, we're actually getting to write those stories and bring perspective to that. And um, I think this kind of goes back to one of your earlier questions is that what, what we're finding is that the more we tell the truth of our stories, the more we are culturally specific, um, authentic to ourselves, the more people respond. Um, so a movie like Crazy Rich Asians does really well uh, because these Asian characters are human beings and that's what we really go to see on television or in movies is real people with real problems because as unique and different as we all are in at our core we're all human beings with very similar struggles similar similar emotional struggles and so whether you're brown or you're white on screen, hopefully, um, kids across the world and adults across the world will still relate to Rahul being a scrawny, nerdy, gay, brown boy in the same way that they would if he was an athletic, straight, white boy because the struggle of do I fit in, do I belong, I think is something that um, hopefully people will, will still relate to. Yes, and again, congratulations, and I really can't wait to see that. So we are almost out of time, but I have a couple of more questions if um, you're up for it. So we have one audience question from Ananya Nair from Trivandrum International School. Uh, Ananya asks, what made you interested in doing voice acting? I'll just quickly ask you the next question as well. Um, So for everyone who's listening, all the students, um, the parents, the librarians, um, so what advice would you give them on dealing um, with kids who might be different or who are struggling with their identity? So these two questions are final questions. So, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. The voice acting, to be honest, kind of, um, kind of just came to me. I was working on a, a TV series in the in the states, and the creators of Phineas and Ferb were fans of my work on the TV show, and they said we're writing this cartoon with a, a young Indian American boy, Indian boy in it, and and they said we'd love to have you come audition. And I went to audition, and I got the part, and I really fell in love with voice acting. It's it's so much fun. It's so creative. You know, in cartoons, you're not limited by the real 
real world. So on a show like Phineas and Ferb, we get to go to outer space. We get to go to underground caves. We get to go to the Himalayas. You know, we get to go all over the place. And so it was it was just so much fun. And that kind of snowballed into um, further voice acting and other jobs. And, and, I, and I really love it. I love it so much. Um, and in terms of advice on dealing with kids who might be struggling with um, feeling different, I think the biggest thing is to listen, you know, to, to if you see a kid who might be struggling to create an opening for them to talk to you, uh, create create an opportunity for them to, to have a quiet time with you and ask them about themselves, listen. Um, you know, I think it's it's challenging to be different, and I think it's very challenging to be different in middle school, um, because I think middle school is a time when kids are really trying to figure out who they are, and there's a lot of pressure to be just like everybody else. Um, so I would say listen to that and encourage them, encourage them to celebrate the unique things about themselves, encourage them to celebrate the things that make them different. And I can tell you that from my own life, the things that felt so terrifying to me in middle school, um, being culturally different, having a different sexual identity, they've become my greatest gifts. And if I'd had an adult who sat down with me when I was 12 or 13 and said, these things that feel so scary to you now are going to be your superpowers when you grow up, it might have made, made, made things just a little bit easier. Wow, thank you. And I'm sure Rahul's story would um, help people, or at least other kids um, who are struggling with their identity and struggling with other things as well. <laughs> so this was such a fun half hour. I can't believe it's already over. So thank you so much, uh, Molik. It's been absolutely wonderful. We wish you all the best. And uh, do you want to say a few words about your next book? I don't, uh, we did not have time for you to ask that question. So your next book, Nickel Out Loud. Yeah, of course, of course. And um, uh, so my, my next book, it comes out this October. Uh, it's called Nikhil Out Loud. And it is about a 13 year old Indian American boy who happens to be gay. And he is a star of a hit cartoon. Uh, so everybody knows his voice. Um, but he loves being in the sound booth. He loves recording this cartoon. Um, he actually feels more comfortable where people can't really see who he is and he gets to play a character than he is in, in his real life. But um, his family, they moved to Ohio. His mom moves him to Ohio from Los Angeles because his grandfather is sick. And when he moves to Ohio, he has to go to a new middle school. Um, a group of parents find out that he's gay and they don't like him being at the school. He finds out that his own grandfather is homophobic. And in the middle of this, because he's 13, his voice starts to change. And so the cartoon job starts to go away and he has to, for the first time in his life, use his own voice and stand up to these people at school who are making life difficult for him and learn to stand up to his own grandfather. Um, and uh, over the course of the book, we find out if Nikhil will actually be able to speak up out loud or not. So that's the book and it's coming out in October. And like the best at it, even though there are some really big themes, um, I think there's some beautiful friendships, really fun. Uh, it's a lot of fun and there's a lot of humor in it. And um, hopefully you all will fall in love with Nikhil in the same way you'll fall in love with Rahul. Awesome. Thank you so much, Malik. We'll uh, hopefully see you soon for the Literature Festival. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> see you.